It's time to de-ice the project car, weigh all the stuff that comes off, and figure out what our weight budget is. It's time for another Putting the EV in 7 video, where we're taking an unloved 2012 Caterham 7 X drift car and converting it to be a shiny new modern EV. Today's is a progress video where I'm going to strip the car down and remove the major bits that I won't be needing in my final electric vehicle. By the end of the video, I'll have a shell with most of the electrics, seats and suspension remaining, but no engine, gearbox or fuel tank. That will leave the basics of the shell that I can then 3D scan and start to figure out where to shoehorn in a motor, inverter and as many battery modules as will fit. I'm leaving the electrics and brakes in place for the time being, until I can decide how much I'll need to play around with them in the shoehorning process. So in the previous video I covered buying the project car, getting it MOT'd, and then getting it road registered. As I record this video, it's early 2025, and I've already been working on this project for three years. So this video is a bit of a time warp where we're now in the spring of 2023. Yes, I know, I'm way behind on these videos. Other projects have got in the way, I'm afraid. But now I'm fully set on this project and videos should be coming up a bit more frequently, hopefully. So in this time warp timeline, the next task after I got the car road legal was to strip the car down and sell off what I don't need. The first I needed to weigh the car and that meant hauling the doomed project car into the garage and witnessing the last gasp of the 1.6 litre Ford Sigma engine in this chassis. Sticking the car on the weight scales, we got to exactly 550 kilos, with half a tank of fuel and all the other fluids included. Now to get cracking on the strip, but hang on, in this warped timeline, before I could get to the strip down, there were a couple of trips to do. And the first was to fully charge live in Farnborough, where I think I was the only caterum in the car park field. There were old electric cars, along with the very new ones, like the Mercury Automotive Spieling a full-on Batmobile. And of course, a trip to the Felton stand to have a look at their electric Mini. Then it was off to the launch of Caterham's Electric 7 at Swindon Powertrain. Caterham are making two Electric 7 exploratory prototypes, weighing in at around 700 kilos and with exotic battery tech. I also got invited to Goodwood to watch Caterham Cars CEO Bob Lashley and VT Holdings Chairman Kazuho Takahashi run up the hill in the first of the prototypes. I'm sure we'll come back to these prototypes in future videos. Then finally for this interlude, there was the annual Taffia Fish and Chip Run, where nearly 300 caterums start from Chepstow in South Wales and head up to the west coast seaside town of Avadubi for fish and chips. This year's was fortunate to have great weather and a sausage and chips for me at the end. So finally onto the strip down. First off then was the battery. The battery amps, stand up and the battery and battery tray. Okay, here we go. <coughs> the, uh, battery cage Drain the oil. And then the coolant. Next was to get the exhaust and the headers off. First job there is to get the springs off that attach the catalytic converter to the headers. Then the lambda sensor. Cat to silencer clip. Rear bobbin, heat shield, catalytic converter, and then the headers. Then I realised the steering column needed to come out first. Like that, which releases the headers for removal. And finally, cover up the exhaust manifold so nothing can get in there. Now the big one, engine out. 
bring in the engine hoist and disconnect the engine from the gearbox. You can take the engine and gearbox out together, but I've heard from Caterham that they do it separately, so that's what I do now. Separating the engine and gearbox turns an unwieldy rear heavy lump into two not so heavy and unwieldy lumps. Off with the engine mounts. Okay. There we go, the engine is free. And out with the engine. And the engine's all ready to be sold. And then another bit of a break, this time the Chipping Sobbury classic car run. I'm not technically a classic car, but they let me in because I looked like I should be. I suspect I'm making up the numbers and usually get to start at the back. But it was another great day out running around the Wiltshire countryside, only punctuated by a huge pothole knocking out the inertia trip. As we hit the bottom of the pothole, the inertia trip fired and the engine stopped. We ground to a halt by the side of the road and conducted a bit of head scratching until I realised what had happened. It's one of the simplest fixes you can imagine. Push the inertia trip button and we're off again. Great day out there, highly recommended. But back to the project car, and now it was the turn of the gearbox to come out. First it was the gear stick and centre console out. The centre console. Then bring in the engine hoist again with the homemade extension arms attached. And gently ease out the gearbox making sure it doesn't fall off the tower of blocks underneath. Then the windscreen and scuttle off. And, there we go. and then finally, out with the fuel tank. And that's most of the extraneous ice stuff removed. Then it was time to sell the engine and the gearbox, both of which went to good homes. So then, what does it weigh? Time for a bit of mass analysis. <clears throat> the car started off at exactly 550 kilos. The engine was 100 kilograms, gearbox 30, and exhaust system 14. 14 kilos. Batteries, nine kilos for the batteries and a little bit for the box. Engine oil. Three and a half kilos and a little, little bit for the bottle. This is the coolant so far, there must be some still in the car, but uh, six kilos and a bit for the bucket. And then we've got a whole pile of coolant pipes, air filter um, and the oil breather bottle. So that and the box is five kilos. And fuel was about 17 kilos after extracting multiple pumpfuls. And this is a complete list of what was taken off. So that leaves a grand total of about 350 kilograms, 200 kilograms lighter than an ice configuration. I'm hoping the UV installation will come in at around 250 kilograms, but that, I'm afraid, is for another video. That's it for this video. We're on to 3D scanning and some space planning next time. So take care and happy blatting.